Okay guys, I'm back for another pour. This is an 18 by 24 inch canvas. In here I have bronze by uh, Liquitex. This is Prussian blue by Grumbacher. This is a mixture between cerulean blue, Prussian blue, um, a tiny bit of dioxazine purple and white. This is cerulean blue and white. This mixture is, I wanted a dark steely gray. It's not really picking it up on camera. Um, but in here is black, a little bit of Prussian blue, a little bit of white, and I added some golden interference blue to it as well. And I'm hoping that will kind of um, catch the light when it's dried. So I'm using this as opposed to black for a stronger contrast, but also more muted and not quite as bold as black would be. Um, this one is this color, but with white, so it's lighter. And this one is brilliant blue. Oh, yeah. Um, and then under my canvas, I've got two foil disposable 13 by 9 inch cake pans, and they're set apart so that um, you can see the paint from the edges will flow into it, and then I've got um, paper underneath to kind of help soak up the excess paint. Oh, in this cup, I forgot to tell you, um, there's a mixture of, let me think, sap green, phthalo green, tiny bit of Prussian blue, and golden interference green. And it's hard to see on camera, but it's got a really pretty metallic sheen to it. It's not picking it up, but it's a nice dark hunter green. And my thought process behind these colors is um, a Michigan winter. We don't have any snow in mid-Michigan right now where I live, but we do have snow, um, some anyway, up north where I grew up. So we're going to start with white in the background as usual. I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I want to make this a negative space pour. Almost out of white. Um, and, and leave a lot of white on the edges or if I'm going to tilt it to cover the whole thing. I don't know yet. So you get to join me for the experiment. And in my paint mixture I use a ratio of 2 to 1 between two parts flow trowel, one part paint, and then just enough water, something in there, um, to help it flow. And my consistency is when you can pour it off your stir stick in a ribbon and it leaves a slight mound in the cup before it falls in and, and evens out. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. There's some blue paint somewhere. Am I blue or am I not? And I usually add paint to the background, whether it's white or another background color, um, to help the paint flow so that I don't have to over tilt. And sometimes when you're over tilting to get, to get coverage, you'll lose some of the shapes and patterns that you like. So you don't need to flood your canvas to where there's too much paint, but you do want a nice even coating over the whole thing. And if you can get your paint to go over the edge, that's all the better because then um, the wet paint that's on here will help carry the colors that you add to it, help it move better, and then you have to ma manipulate it less. If I could talk, would be a good thing. So, I 
And I've also um, taken to putting my white base in a squeezy bottle. You can get these on Amazon. They're like, I don't know, six or eight bucks for a pack of six of them. And it's just nice because it's controllable. It's a small amount of paint that comes out of the tip. And it just helps you to add tiny bits where you need it, like corners. Because we all know the paint does not like to flow over hard edges, like corners. And you can do this before or after you pour your colors. I do it both ways. You do want to make sure you clean off your tip when you're done though, because it can seal shut if it dries, if the paint dries in this little opening. Let's do one cup to start with and then we will add if necessary. Okay, I'm starting with this periwinkle color. I'm going to go in with my Prussian, which is a nice deep navy blue. I'm going to add a little bronze. And when you pour up high like that, your paint's going to sink down to the bottom. If you pour close to the edge, it will kind of sit on top. Like that. And then I'm going to go in with my super pale blue mixture. What next? I do want this to be a little bit more muted if I can get away with it, so we'll see how it turns out. Now I don't add any silicone to my paint because I'm not after a big cell pattern. I'm going to move you in a little bit so you can see how this is developing. So I have a lot in here and I think that's due to the flow trial. But I like to, I'd like to keep this linear pattern if I can manage.
I'm gonna move you back out so you can see the whole thing again. I love all this. I don't like this. So. So, I'm going to let this dry. Now, this size canvas, 18 by 24 um, inches, will take between three and four days to dry completely to the touch, to where you can move it without disturbing it. Um, but you want to let your paintings, any, any bigger than um, an 8 by 10, you want to let it sit for a good month, so at least four weeks before you varnish it. Um, and that's because there's a lot of paint on these. It's very layered. Um, and you gotta give it time to dry. It dries from the inside up. So you'll see the edges creep in as it dries. 
so it goes from the outside to the inside. Um, but the underlying layers of paint need to dry too. And that takes process through the back of the canvas. Um, if you don't wait long enough and you go to varnish it before it's completely cured, it can lead to crazing and cracking, which is um, a little crackly pattern through your varnish. Which could be cool looking if that's what you're going for. Um, but I think generally speaking, that's not what most people are going for. So just a rule of thumb, let it dry for a good month, any bigger than an eight by 10, and you shouldn't have any problems. For one this size, I'll probably let it sit about six weeks before I go to varnish it. So the bigger the canvas, the longer it takes to dry, obviously the longer you need to let it cure um, before varnishing. Now this is acrylic paint, so you don't have to varnish it. However, I varnish all of mine because it protects it. Um, it gets longer life out of it. And when you have the darker colors, they will dry back a little bit darker. Um, and the varnish will add that luster back into it and that gloss back into it and kind of give it a little bit more life. So we are gonna wait for this to dry and then um, I will show you what that looks like. Have a good day guys. So this is the gray and blue dry, and I'm calling this uh, Michigan Winter. I think the colors are really pretty and really reminiscent of um, cold, snowy, icy um, Michigan Winter. So here's that corner where I swiped and then poured on and kind of tilted it and blew into it a little bit. I was curious to see how that one was gonna dry and I really like it. I like this patch of icy blue here. I like how the bronze kind of threaded through with the blue and the gray. And I really love this lacing effect that we got over here. I can look closer. That is really pretty. So this is not varnished, obviously. It's a, it's a matte finish. Um, it'll be, I don't know, two or three weeks more before I'll varnish it. And I love how this green kind of came through and the blue popped through the green in this corner. So this kind of reminds me of a frozen flow. So in Michigan we have a lot of waterfalls and we have obviously a lot of lakes and rivers. Um, and this kind of is reminiscent of how the water will freeze as it's in movement. If you've ever seen to comment on falls in the wintertime, you can see a lot of that. And if you've ever been up on Lake Superior um, in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, you'll see um, sometimes the ice will kind of shelve up on itself um, and kind of get different hues of brown and blue. And that's always really pretty too. So yeah, there's the piece dry. Hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below what you think and we will catch you guys on the next one. Have a good day guys. Bye bye.